talk some NBA. Last night, Kawhi Leonard actually played basketball, Nick. Yep. That Happy after he missed Wednesday's game against the Bucks because of... Load management. After the game, Kawhi said he was, quote, shocked that the NBA revealed the nature of his injury. The NBA also fined the Clippers $50,000 for Doc Rivers' comments that were inconsistent with Kawhi Leonard's health. Nick, I ask you, what's your reaction to the latest here with Kawhi? Kawhi was great last night, particularly in the fourth quarter. More on that in a moment, but you used a very important word there. Inconsistent. And that is what I would call the Clippers, Doc Rivers, and even Kawhi Leonard, on this very specific issue. Doc Rivers said Kawhi is totally healthy and said he feels great. And the reason he feels great is because of what we've been doing. Kawhi Leonard, coming into the year, said feels so much better than he did at this point last season when he was coming off the injury, the injury controversy with the Spurs and said load management would be different this year. That has not been the case. Their messaging has been one thing, their actions have been another. Kawhi Leonard is not only not playing in back-to-backs, and they're saying he can't play in back-to-backs. NBA saying it's because of a patella tendon issue in his knee. That's what Kawhi was, I think, most upset about, is that the NBA was revealing his private medical information. But they're not even using Kawhi Leonard in the games that he plays in a way I've ever seen a superstar use. How do you mean? But Well, his minutes through three quarters every game are... Yesterday, he played four minutes in the third quarter. Yesterday, he played going into the fourth quarter of the game. He had played 21 minutes of his team's 36. That is not a typical rotation uh, minutes for the superstar on your team, especially a superstar in year eight or in year nine, pardon me, at 28 years old. But what it is resulting in is in every game, Kawhi Leonard is the freshest player on the court in the fourth quarter. He's averaging 13 and a half points per game in the fourth quarter. 18 last he, night. He, 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 no, he was great last night. He's had at least 15 fourth quarter points in three straight games because of the way they're using him. It is got to be frustrating as a Clippers fan wondering, is, is it true he couldn't do this if he had played the night before? No one will know. I just know this, we've never seen a guy his age, his level of stature in the league be on this type of system. Maybe it will work out for them, but it's unprecedented for a player who, unlike Kawhi Leonard last year, he's not coming off a major injury where we knew going into the year he was going to be on a minutes or a games restriction. Yeah, he's not coming off a major injury, but we saw them have an adjustment to how they manage what he dealt with two years ago in Toronto, and they had success with that formula. So I think that the Clippers and Doc Rivers wanted to adopt that. What I find strange about the situation is that Kawhi is so vocal about not having the health concerns that the organization and that the medical staff and the head coach do. When Kawhi comes out and says, no, I'm healthy, this is the best I've ever felt, while the organization is saying we're managing a condition that he's dealing with within his knee, to me, that, that, that inconsistency is something that you try to avoid. Most functional organizations don't have those types of things pop up. And then when the NBA is chiming in on it and saying, yeah, we've been in consultation with the Clippers medical staff, from the NBA's perspective, they're trying to protect their relationship with their business partners, which is a television company. Yep. So you can understand why they would want the narrative out there about Kawhi managing a significant injury. But I don't understand from Kawhi's standpoint what there is to be gained by coming out and contradicting your head coach and the organization. This is an organization that you decided to come to in free agency. You're the one that forced them to trade Danilo Gallinari and Shea Gilgis Alexander and a boatload of picks to the Oklahoma City Thunder to get you a running mate in Paul George. This is the situation that you ask for. And so early in the season when they're trying to do you a solid because you don't want to play in more than 60 to 65 games in the regular season, why would you come out and put them in a tough spot with the league office and put the league in a tough spot with their television partners? Well, and one other note that I, because I understand there's going to be a lot of folks who use last night as vindication of the plan, which is, look, didn't play the night before, he's sensational in the fourth quarter, they're, they're down six at the, going into the fourth quarter, they end up winning by six, and all, all that is fair to a degree. But Kawhi Leonard is going to, I, I believe by some, start to assume the mantle of, well, this is obviously the most clutch player in the league. Look at what he's doing in the fourth. There's an element of that is going, if this is the plan, that is going to be fairly graded on a curve. Like every year, Steph Curry is not 
the highest three-point percentage in basketball. But we all know he's the best three-point shooter in basketball. Sometimes Joe Harris or Joe Ingles, somebody will lead the league in three-point percentage. But we say, well, there's none of those are pull-up threes. Those are they're shooting when they're open. And Steph, he's shooting in the in the flow of the offense, not in the flow of the offense. He's shooting in tough situations, on tough situations. So we understand even if his numbers don't say it, he's the best shooter in the league. Well, if you've got only one superstar in basketball that gets to be the freshest player when he does play, only one superstar in basketball that is going to play less minutes than anyone else the first three quarters, that has to be baked into the math of what he does in the fourth quarter. And so right now for the Clippers, it is working. They are five and one with him. It's working when he's playing. I'm very curious to watch how this evolves throughout the season, and I'm curious to watch how their seeding is affected by the 20-some games he might plan to miss this year, and if that's going to be a little different than how it affected the Raptors last year out east. What will also be interesting is how much pressure the organization puts on him if the NBA comes down on them and saying, listen, this has got to stop in terms of how you're trying to manage Kawhi Leonard in the games that he's playing. I think that's something that's going to be a strained dynamic throughout the course of the year. I had no idea you had such an issue with load management. I mean, when I met you, I didn't know. Like, well, I, listen, I, just, I got this weird Clearly theory. he's passionate about it. profit organization deploying military veterans and community leaders to build stronger communities across the nation by improving schools, revitalizing parks, and fostering neighborhood identity. Visit www.missioncontinues.org to learn more. And once again, thank you to everyone in our audience this morning. Time for us to go viral. Check out Christian Lewis. Christian Lewis is a six foot three inch, 363 pound, sixth grade running back. <laughs> the 11 year old defenders don't stand a single chance. Hold on, hold on a yep. second. <laughs> Take that in, Nick. No, man. Just that is something his about way. that. That's, that's not right. That that's, that's not right. That ain't right. And I, I, this is, I mean, if, you know what a lot of those sixth graders on the opposing team aren't going to be? Seventh grade football players, because they're gonna be. I'm out. Oh, yeah. I'm done. I this this sport ain't for me. Listen, Sounds like you're speaking from experience. Nah, man. Oh, okay. oh come on. See, you know what, Kenny? What do you hold on? What do you mean? <laughs> hold on a second. Listen, I, I ain't a six foot eight freak of nature like you, superstar athlete, multiple sports. But I'm not gonna sit here and let you defame my mediocre, if not try hard, athletic career. You earlier said I got dunked on all the time. False. False. Okay. False. Absolutely false. Second, now you're saying I quit football. I never played football, mind you, sir, so I couldn't have quit football. Because you knew that would happen. Hell That's why yeah, because there's a bunch exactly. of y'all out there. <laughs> I ain't dealing with you. Oh, man. Six foot three, sixth grader. Check the birth certificate, folks. <laughs> Give me a break. Time for stories to start your morning. Last night, the Raiders beat the Chargers 26-24. They improved to 5-4 and four in the season. They're now just a half game back in the wild card race. Kenny, how big of a win was this for the Raiders? That was a huge win for the Raiders. Last night was a swing game for them trying to get position for one of those wild card spots in the AFC. If you look at the rest of their schedule, only one team with a winning record in their last seven games. That's huge for the Raiders last night, winning an AFC West matchup. They're going to be right there in the playoff conversation. You can argue it was an enormous win, and you can mark it down right now. The Raiders will be seven and four, going to Kansas City with an opportunity to get a share of the divisional lead with the Chiefs. Now, I don't know that they will be successful in that game, but seven and four. We, why do I say seven and four? Cincinnati, Cincinnati and the Jets. So their next two games. This the Raiders have lost four games this year to four high quality opponents. Not just good teams, but very good teams. Give the Raiders and Gruden, man. Well, he's been about a lot of jokes on this show. He's got his team playing well, and maybe most importantly for them, they have legitimate optimism as they move to Vegas, which is what he was hired to instill. All right, moving on to the Cowboys now. Amari Cooper was held out of practice yesterday because of a knee injury. He underwent an MRI and is expected to play on Sunday. Kenny, how important is Amari to the Cowboys with the Vikings coming to town? Well, Amari was huge. You go back to last year when they traded for him. I mean, you saw the difference in Dak Prescott. And guess what? Amari Cooper showed up against the Giants last week with a touchdown to ice that football game on Monday night. So, I mean, Amari Cooper opens up that offense for Dak. He's that take the top off of the defense kind of guy. And when you got to have it, a pass outside of the numbers downfield, Amari Cooper is going to be the top target. Amari Cooper is not the best receiver in the NFL. I don't think anyone would call him that. 
but he is one. Of, he's on the very short list of the most important receivers in the NFL because what we saw Dak look like last year before he got there, and then once he got there, what we've seen Dak this year when Amari's been out there or at least fully 